number one uh, on this morning, Joshua, uh, chapter number one, and there are three verses that I want to uh, amplify until your consecrated hearing on this morning that will serve as a predicate for our preaching and our teaching on this morning. We'd like to thank God for all of the guests uh, that are here this morning with no bound. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our Amen. sanctified assembly. And it's already been said, but uh, this is a loving church and they have uh, poured out their love and we are pouring out our love even now. We thank you so very much for taking time out to be a part of this consecrated assembly. And uh, you could have been in a lot of other places, but you chose to know about on this morning. Uh, this church is grateful. And if you're looking for a church home, a place to be where there's love and, and a place where there's joy. Y'all know there's some joy. Y'all saw the joy this morning, amen. Where they, they ain't scared to praise God. Amen. And they lavishly love uh, everybody. This is uh, the place. And so as we share God's word this morning, we're going to extend the Savior's invitation at the conclusion of this word. And that will be your clue to come. Believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, repenting of sins, confessing him to be the sweetest name on water tongue, yes. being baptized in water for the remission yes. of your sins. You'll come up a new creature in Christ Jesus. A new creature. How about that? Brand new yes. creature. Tag still on you. Amen. I'm talking about the cleanest thing in the building. New creature in Christ Jesus. Yeah. If any man be in Christ, he's a what? New creature. Old things. And behold, all things have become new. And that can be your lot uh, even on uh, this morning. Good to see uh, my good friend uh, all, all the way from the Hartman Road Church of Christ. Amen. Demetrius Bryant, his wonderful wife, Sister Bryant. Good to see them. Amen. This, uh, one of my good friends and you know his wife I have a little trouble with her <laughs> y'all pray for me we've been trying to get her converted for a while now. <laughs> see I'm, I'm Starbucks no, no. and she uh, Duncan <laughs> I think their motto is America runs from Duncan <laughs> So we've been trying to convert her for a while. Get some real coffee in her life. Amen. So let's pray for her. <laughs> it's good to see them. And Demetrius is doing a phenomenal job at the Hartman Road Church of Christ. I'm just honored to be uh, a co-patron of his and he of me. Amen. Joshua, <clears throat> chapter number one on this morning. Uh, let me read it. Uh, until you're hearing verses 1, verse 2, and verse number 3. And these three verses will be our, our preaching assignment on this morning. Joshua 1, verses 1, 2, and verse number 3. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Ready to read, say bless the word. Bless the word. Bible says, text says, after, somebody say After. after. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this joy you and all of this people to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I have given unto you, as I said to Moses. Let the church say amen. amen. I want to preach to you sermonized from the subject this morning. It's time to move. It's time to move. Before you take a sacrifice, so look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, it's time, it's time to, move. to move. Look at another neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor it's, time it's time to move. To move. To and I want you to say it to yourself. Say, self, self it, is it is time for me to move. To move. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's, it's time um, to move. Um, 
Brothers and sisters, ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, the very first word of this text mm -hmm. sends us a theological symbol that there is indeed more to the text. Because you see, the very first word of the text, after, is a coordinating conjunction. It is an antecedent. It is designed to connect two thoughts, two seasons, two clauses together so that you can appreciate that there is continuity between the two thoughts. It is, it is circumstantial that this text opens up with a nexus or a connection to something that has been previously said or previously done. And it is not Brother Brown, until you connect the two pieces together that you can truly appreciate what is about to be said. Come on. And so when we, we consider this uh, transitional conjunction, it, it causes us to think about where it is that the children of Israel find themselves. Mm -hmm. The very first verse says, after the death of Moses, mm -hmm. the servant of of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord now speaks to Joshua, Moses' assistant. And there is a divine assignment, a divine appointment that God has for Joshua, but there must first be some coordination between what was the past and what is the future. For you see, Israel is at a pivotal point uh, in their journey to the land that's called the land of milk uh, and honey. They are at a critical place in the soul, in the spirit of this congregation that we call Israel. And right here, I want to let you know that we're going to transpose this text on where I believe this church finds itself even on this morning. See, you can't be dismissive of your past, but you got to know how to process your past. And sometimes it's necessary to process your past before you can obtain a brand new future. You see, sometimes we, we, we think that the past really don't matter. And I can tell you unequivocally that in some situations and in some circumstances, your past really don't matter particularly when it comes to God. It does not matter where you come from. What really matters to God is where you are going. But if your past is connected to your future, it is important for you, it is pertinent for you to know how to compartmentalize and how to process your past because you cannot divorce from your past. Because your past was just that. It was your past. And sometimes your past can teach you valuable lessons as you move towards your future. Somebody has said what we have learned from the past is that we do not learn from our past. God has the expectation that all of us will learn some lessons from the things that we have gone through in the past. And those things that might be good for us, we carry those over to our future. And everything that's not good for us, we leave it in the past. Are y'all with me so far? So, so the text is saying you need to take a look back before you can go forward. So when the text says after the death of Moses, he's saying that these people find themselves at a critical place in their journey. And in order for us to appreciate where they are and where they will be in the future, we got to go back to the past. And in chapter number 34 of the book of Deuteronomy, which is the last book of the Pentateuch, the book of the law or the Torah, we find that Moses has stretched his hand out for the last time. Because it's in the 34th chapter of the book uh, of Deuteronomy that God processes what has already transpired with God's servant Moses. And it's critical for this church to know 
that Israel finds herself in a plain or in a valley that's called Moab. I don't think y'all getting that. I said they find themselves in a plain or in a valley that's called Moab. And in order for us to really appreciate this text, you got to appreciate what is a valley experience. What's the valley, Brother Daniels? Well, it is this incline that is brought to bear by two inclines. Amen, somebody. It is a depression that takes place because you have two ascensions on both sides. And when you have two ascensions on both sides, what you have in the middle is what's called a valley. What's a valley, Brother Daniels? Well, a valley, metaphorically, is that thing that we refer to when we are sick and sad. It is sometimes referred to as the valley of bereavement or the valley of sorrow. A place in your life and a place in my life where things are not the way we want them to be. Amen. Y'all heard David over there in Psalm 23. He leads me through the valley and the shadow of death. Why? Because the valleys remind us of the sad times. The valley reminds us of the depressed times. The valley reminds us of those despondent times in our lives when we were when we were sick, when we were sad, when we were dealing with some stuff, when the sun was not shining in our lives. Anybody know anything about a valley? I'm talking about everybody got some valleys. Not the peaks, not the heights of your life, but I'm talking about the valleys. The low points in your life. Amen. When everything ain't what it want, what you want it to be. When things are not going right. When things go south in your life. When grandma died. When, when granddaddy died. When you lose the house. Amen. When there's a loss in our lives. When there's a loss in the family. I'm talking about a valley. When you lose your job. When you ain't got no money. When you're dealing with trial, tribulation, and trouble. When whatever could go wrong does go wrong. I'm talking talking about a valley. And a valley is something that oftentimes the church goes through as well. Every day ain't a hot day. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. Every day ain't a hot day. I didn't say every day God wasn't good. I just say sometimes the church go through some things and sometimes even the church has what's called a valley experience. And this is important to note because Israel is now having a valley experience. And if you look at chapter number 34, right there at verse number 8, uh, the Bible says, And the children uh, of Israel, watch this, wept for Moses, wept out. In the plain or in the valley of Moab for how long? For 30 days. And so the days of weeping uh, and mourning for Moses had ended. Y'all see that church? Now I'm about to say something that's real profound right here. You see, you see, it is necessary to weep over Moses. All right, all right. All right, y'all ain't gonna hear me this morning. The Bible didn't say that, that they lost Moses. The great emancipator of the people of God. The great deliverer of the people of God. I'm talking about Moses, the one that climbed up there on Mount Sinai. The one that got in Pharaoh's face and said, let my people go. Well, who sent you, Moses? I am that I am. I'm talking about the one that stretched out his rod over the Red Sea. And it parted two ways and the children of Israel crossed over on dry land. I'm talking about that Moses, the great emancipator of the people of God. And you cannot lose a leader like that except you shed some tears. Amen, somebody. So the Bible didn't say that they just uh, disparaged Moses. Bible didn't say they just kicked him to the curb. The Bible says that they wept over Moses. And see, God didn't go into no detail. Amen, somebody. God didn't say he is what had happened. He didn't relitigate the past. He says Moses was a great servant of mine. Amen, somebody. And he was saying, in essence, you are where you are because Moses brought you thus far. And the text is indicating that it was necessary for the children of Israel to weep, to cry, to mourn over 
Moses. Y'all ain't saying nothing up here. But now the Bible says, the text going to tell us that, that there was something that happened between God and Moses that caused Moses not to cross over to the promised land. But he ain't talking about that. But because you read your Bible, and because I read my Bible, and we already know what the news is, and it's not fake news. Moses didn't cross because Moses didn't give glory to God. So God had a man-to-man -man talk with Moses. He had a personal conversation with Moses. Amen, somebody. And he didn't disparage Moses. He didn't put Moses down. What the conversation was was between God and Moses. And God took care of Moses. Y'all don't see it in the text. This was between God and Moses. And what, what God did was allow Moses to look over to the promised land. Because you see, the mountain that they stand on, it gives you a purview to all of the land that flows with milk and honey. God took him up there and he said, you see this over here? You see the Jordan right there? You see the land of Canaan right there? You see Jericho over there? You see all the cities that I'm going to give God people? This was between God and Moses. Y'all ain't saying it up in here. And God buried Moses in the valley of Moab. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here this morning. And this was between God and Moses and the people because they had been under the leadership of Moses for so long, God had to help them to process their situation. And so after chapter 34 of the book of Deuteronomy, we turn over uh, to Joshua chapter number one. And now this is going to help you to appreciate what is about to be said. If you're still with me, say amen. Amen. Y'all are quiet church over here where I come from. They be saying amen. Even if you don't want them, they give it to you. Now the text says, the text says, uh, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord began to speak to somebody else. Y'all gonna see it. After the death of Moses, God began to speak to Moses' assistant who was Joshua. Because God didn't have two voices at one time. Amen. Because anytime you have two voices and two visions at the same time, what you have is that vision. And when you have that vision, you really have the vision, and you can't move forward nor bound when you have the vision. Because you need to have univision. vision. What's your vision, brother? You got to have one vision for God's people. The vision comes from God. He gives the vision to the man of God. Then the man of God gives the vision to God's people. Y'all on the line this morning? If you don't have one vision, then you have that vision. So the text says unequivocally that after the death of Moses... God's servant, he began to speak to Joshua. Y'all seeing this? Now, God didn't speak to Joshua while he was talking to Moses. That's right, God. Amen. Amen, somebody. Because he did not want the congregation to be divided. And he wanted the congregation to know that God had one voice, and that one voice was with the man of God. Y'all hear me this morning? So, Brother Brown, you need to understand that now that God is no longer speaking to Moses, that era, that period, that assignment is over. Now there comes a new season, a new assignment, a new era for the people of God. And God only speaks to one servant at a time. Y'all don't believe me? It's right here in the text. I'm going to read it again. After, somebody say after. After. After of the death of Moses, of the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua. Watch this. Uh, let's get it right. The, the, the son of Nun. Not that he didn't have a daddy. His daddy's name was Nun. Because some of y'all think he ain't. He, he, he didn't belong to nobody, no. That, that's his dad. His dad's name is Nun. He spoke to Joshua, uh, the son of Nun. Watch this. Moses' assistant, what did he say? He said, it's time for y'all to move. I 
wish I had got an amen right about that. But he says, it's time for us to go forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's time for us to get up from where we are. It's time for us to shake the dust off. It's time for us to go forward in Christ Jesus. Nudge yeah. your neighbor real quick, say it's time to move. That wasn't the right neighbor. Get a nudge. Say it's time to move. The one that sleep back there, won't you shake him? And say it's time to move. Amen, somebody. What's the message that God has for Joshua? It's time to move. Right there, verse number two, the Bible says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, the same thing that he had to tell the people of God is the same thing that he had to tell Joshua. Because, you see, Joshua had been under the tutelage for Moses. Amen, somebody. He knew Moses. He understood Moses. He was used to receiving the divine assignment from Moses. But now this is a new era. He's going to hear from God himself. And he had to help Joshua process Moses in his own spirit. Because really, Moses, I mean, Joshua is no different from anybody else. He has hurts. He has pains. He has regrets like everybody else. Y'all ain't in here. He knew Moses. He was close to Moses. He understood Moses. He worked with Moses. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. But he had to tell even him, Moses, my servant is dead. It's time for us to move forward. Y'all ain't receiving this. Y'all ain't receiving this. Let me, let me read it to you one more time. Moses, my servant is dead. Yeah, yeah. Now, somebody say now. Now. See, see, it's necessary, uh -huh. church, to, 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 to process your past yeah. so that you can go forward. Because if you don't process your past, your past going to bleed into everything you do in the future. See, see, one thing about God, God will always give you a new lease. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He'll, give you, he'll give you a new day. And I'm glad the sun goes down, then the sun come back up. That's a reminder of God's amazing grace, his abundant mercy. We think might endure for a night, but guess what? Joy, and it don't matter how long your night was, joy is coming in the morning. It does not matter what you went through on yesterday. Joy is coming in the morning. Doesn't matter how tough it was yesterday. Joy is coming in the morning. Don't matter how bitter the divorce was yesterday. Joy is coming in the morning. Does not matter what kind of fights and arguments you had on yesterday. Joy is coming in the morning. Does not matter how ugly your yesterday was. Guess what? Joy is coming in the morning. Does not matter how hurt you were in yesterday and in your past. Joy is coming in the morning. I wish I had a church. It does not matter how uh, how terrible your future, your past was. Joy is coming in the morning. It does not matter what happened to you personally. Guess what? Joy is coming. It, it does not matter who hurt you on yesterday. The hurt of yesterday is not a part of your pleasure on tomorrow. Cause joy is coming in the morning. It does not matter how broke, busted, and disgusted you were on yesterday. Guess what? Joy is coming in the morning. It does not matter what you lost in the past. Guess what? Joy is coming in the morning. It does not matter about your mistakes on yesterday. You are not the mistake that you made on yesterday. Why? Because joy is coming in the morning. Ain't you glad joy is coming? I wish I had my 25 folk that will stand on their feet and say, thank God for the morning. Thank God for the future. My yesterday ain't got to be my tomorrow. My hurry of past don't have to be my hurry in the future. What happened yesterday came to pass. The Bible says it came to pass. Why? Because it came to pass. It was meant to stay with me all of my life. Amen, somebody. And that's what I'm glad the scripture says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Watch this. Old things. Somebody say old things. Are passed away and behold. All things are becoming new. Y'all hear that part right there? Becoming new. Sometimes this new stuff is happening so fast in your life that you ain't got time to deal with what happened yesterday. I wish I could preach right here. 
The dude that hurt you yesterday, that's yesterday's news. The guy that God is giving you right now, you so busy with him, walking with him, talking with him, receiving gifts from him, you ain't got time to worry about your past. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. Oh, we're sitting a chick. I we don't say that over here. Uh, where I come from. Uh, the woman that hurt you in your past, amen, somebody, you ain't got time to dwell on your past because God got so much new happening in your life right now. You ain't got time to dwell on the past. Somebody ought to thank God for a brand new day. Because it came to pass. Y'all don't believe it? I'm going to hold that question. He says, he says, a coffee, he says, a rag. Because this is a metaphorical, circumstantial posture that the people of God took. They were down. They were down. They weren't even on their feet. They, they were in a posture of, of sadness. Yeah. They had, they had lost zeal, lost encouragement, lost joy, lost peace, lost the hope. And God had to get it right with the man of God so he can transmit that to the people of God. The first thing he said to Joshua, Joshua Brown, get up. What God got in store for you requires for you to get up from where you are. Stop sitting down. Stop laying down. Amen. Your, your future is greater than your past. He says, arise. A mental condition of let me get ready for what's next. Yeah, I struck out yesterday, but I got to get ready for the next game. My team lost three in a row, but I got to get ready for the next game. Hey, I missed the ball. I missed the opportunity. I made the mistake. Yes, I failed on yesterday, but God said, arise. Get up, get ready for the next game. Why? Because it's time to move. He says, oh, and I wish no about what he meant. Arise. Whatever power you lost, get it back. Stand on your two feet. Square your shoulders up. Get the dust off your shoulders. Put your head on straight. Lift your eyes to the hills and just keep it your help. Your help come from the Lord that made the heavens and he says, arise. If you lost your zeal, get your zeal together. If you lost your joy, get your joy together. If you lost heart, get your heart together. Amen, somebody. The first thing he says, no bound, arise. God got some great things in store for you. And if he, and if he got something special for you, you got to get in position. You ain't got your money yet, but go shopping for your house early. Just go drive through some neighborhoods. Say, hey, what you doing in this? I'm getting ready for the next day. Amen. Go, go, go to the most expensive mall you got and just go looking at stuff. Say, man, would you like to buy that? No, not today. I'm, I'm coming back for it. Because I'm getting my mind right for what's next. Y'all ain't saying that for if you lost your boot, get ready for your next boot. Put on your best dress, your, your best shoes. Put on the red bottoms, amen. The ones that you have to paint, amen, somebody. Get in your best outfit. Get your hair did, get your nail did. Get your foot did, amen, somebody. You're going on a date, not yet, but I'm getting ready for it. I'm talking about sometimes you got to just arrive. You got to call those things that be not as though they were. God want to know, is you ready for what's next? Stop sulking in your past. Stop holding on to the regrets of yesterday. Stop letting your past beat you up. Yesterday's losses, yesterday's grief, yesterday's sorrow, yesterday's pain. He said, all right, get up from there, shake it off, and get ready for what's next. Why? Because it's time to move. Let Lord Bound say that nice and heartily. It's time to move. Say it again, it's time to move. Everybody that's up in here ought to say, it's time to move. 
first thing God says to Joshua, arise. I'm about to talk to you. And I want you sitting down. I want you laying down when I talk to you. I want you in a full position of attention. Because what I'm about to tell you is the most consequential thing that I can tell you. This assignment that I'm about to give to you, there is no assignment like this assignment. Because this assignment is the greatest assignment of your life. But you got to get in position. You got to be in the right posture. You got to hear me closely. You got to hear me carefully. Because what I'm about to say is going to be important for you to hear. He says, arise. What did he say? He says, arise and go over this joy. See, they're on this side. God said, you need to be on that side because you're on the wrong side. Your past has brought you up to here. But it's time for you now to make a transition. Anytime you cross water, it means change. When you baptize, it means change. When Israel crossed the Jordan, crossed the Red Sea, that meant change. And when they crossed the Red Sea, the Jordan on this time, it means change. You can't get the new unless you're willing to change. God is saying, I don't want you holding on to the past. I want you to go forward. And to go forward, you're going to have to change. And the reason that they're going to cross over on dry land is because God don't want no mud on the new carpet. There you go. 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 See, y'all thought the miracle was just the water standing up on two sides. No, the miracle was that the ground was dry. It wasn't muddy. Amen, somebody. Why it wasn't muddy, brother Dave? Because God didn't want the mud in the mess of yesterday to come over to the future of the people of God. That's why the Bible said when they crossed over, they didn't even have no mud on their shoes. Amen, somebody. And everything that happened on that side of Jordan didn't get brought over on this side of Jordan. Because in this, God wanted a brand new people to inherit a brand new land. Y'all ain't said it. Cause some of y'all, when y'all walk in these people's houses, y'all don't even wipe y'all feet. I'm almost done with y'all. See, the stuff that you picked up on the outside, along the way, the stuff that got on the bottom of your shoes. Sometimes when y'all go to a new place, you bring in 